Hey there, folks. So, I just had a weird little um, hold my beer moment. Um, I've been playing with my uh, flash cart here. This is an original Easy Flash Omega. Uh, I bought this when they were new, um, probably within a few weeks. Uh, I bought it off some random unauthorized third party AliExpress seller, and quite frankly, it has been fine. Um, I know better now, and I don't necessarily recommend that, but I didn't get burned. Uh, anyway, the problem is, this is an old cart, and these things come with relatively small batteries. Now, it's probably going to prove me wrong, and, yep, it is still partially holding time? Yeah, kinda. Um, today's no longer the first, but it also didn't reset back to the default. I don't know where it's keeping time, uh, but the problem is the battery is dead. Uh, now I have done a video previously on replacing the batteries in these things, but that kind of requires that you have one of these and I have 100% no idea where to get one of these. Um, I asked Retro Game Repair Shop about it and they told me they'd look into it and um, I never followed up. I'll post more details on that in the description, but I'll also post a link to this, and if we can get these specific batteries, I'll definitely post a link to that. But as far as I can tell, there isn't a way to get these specific batteries without contacting Easy Flash directly. Um, maybe they'll change their mind now that plenty of these carts are out in the wild and seemingly dying. Um, I did check around on Mauser's website and DigiKey's website. Uh, DigiKey did not have any tabbed CR1220 batteries, which is what this thing uses. Let me go ahead and pop this out. I gotta be careful. I did modify this thing with a little indicator LED, uh, but with the holes I cut, it's simple enough to get it out. You just gotta be cognizant of the fact that it's actually there. Ta-da! And it's just this bad boy. Tab battery. Not too difficult. And goodness. If I get my multimeter here, set it to voltage mode, prop that up so you can see it a little bit better, maybe. And touch this battery, you can see that it is at one volt. Well, maybe not. You'll have to take my word for it. Uh, but the multimeter is showing it as one volt, which is... Not very, oh, if we angle it that way, you can see it a little bit better. How about that? There we go. I have my probe's reversed, so it's gonna show as negative, but that's fine. Still good enough. See, 1.0 and dropping. <laughs> so on the original Easy Flash Omega, um, you don't really need the battery for anything except for real-time clock. Uh, the cart does still work totally fine. When you save in-game, it just writes it directly to the SD card. You just have to kind of pause for a minute. That was the exact reason I added the indicator LED so you can see when it's accessing the SD card. You just don't turn it off when you see the indicator LED blinking. Um, and usually won't corrupt. I have had exactly zero issues with mine, but I know some people seem to have non-stop issues. Um, could be related to your SD card, could be related to your game. I don't know. Uh, I All I can say is I'm definitely not using a high quality SD card. It still seems to work fine for me. Um, I like to live dangerously, I guess. Uh, but anyway, I had sort of a hold my beer moment, as I was saying earlier. Um, I cut out this wall in the casing. So on this side, there's this wall that, that makes this chamber kind of isolated and dedicated. There was supposed to be one here too, but I cut that out. You might notice that's right above the battery. Let's do some shenanigans. I also found this in my parts bin. It is a tabbed CR2032. It is not new, but it's good enough. It's measuring at just under 3 volts. Uh, a new battery should be at about 3.2 volts. Um, the 3 volt mark is about where I'd say you shouldn't install it, 
and since I'm not going to be installing this in anything else, might as well use it for shenanigans. Um, now, first and foremost, the tabs are 100% less than ideal. Um, it's going to make what I, what I want to do here a little bit more difficult, but you can probably see where I'm going with this. Let's go ahead and get this battery out of here. Try not to touch both sides at the same time. That's how you short the battery. Also, if you're the type that is a little bit less confident with soldering, maybe it's a good idea to um, insulate the cart pins to ensure you don't get solder on there. These bad boys, because once you get solder on there, it's game over. You can't, you can't remove the solder. Once it's bonded to the gold pins, it's there for life. You can replate the gold pins, but if you're the type that gets solder on the gold pins, um, I'm guessing that replating the gold pins is going to be a little bit beyond you. I mean, no offense. Um, it's beyond me, too. Alright. So next, I'm just going to solder this freaking thing in. Uh, which side is which? I believe this back side should be the positive side. So I am going to, it's labeled, the bottom one is positive, the top one is negative. I'm going to add that in there, but first I want to insulate it just a little bit. Ooh, that is going to be tight. We'll make it work. Or would it be better if I, nah. We'll totally make this work. See, look that in there. Okay, it's going to be really tight. Actually, that doesn't even fit. I should have tested this beforehand. Let me get a uh, slightly smaller battery. Maybe not a CR2032. Alright, I found some other batteries. I have a CR2025. Looks like it just barely fits. Uh, but, you know, it doesn't matter if it's an inch or a mile. Fitting's fitting. Alright. So I'm thinking we'll just leave it in the casing like this, insulate it, and then just attach both sides with wires, because I think that's going to be my best chance at getting this to fit. Um, I'm trying to think about which way I want to do this. Before I go any further though, let's just double check that this battery is actually good. This is one of those cheap generic ones. Yeah, 3.3 volts. Should be, should be plenty. And for what it's worth, I do not recommend this in the slightest. I have several easy flash carts and um, you know, I, I, I frame this video like I'm trying to use this thing, trying to play it, but I have an Easy Flash Omega Definitive Edition. I have an EverDrive GB X5 Mini. And I also have a perfectly working Easy Flash Omega with a good battery. Um, not to mention that battery I showed you earlier. This thing should still be good. <laughs> I'm just exploring options here. Let's put that away. Then nice and tinned up. 
flip it over, do the other side. Even though we're still dead bugging this thing in, we want to use a tabbed battery because soldering directly to the battery is um, wildly unsafe. Um, these things explode if they're exposed to too much heat. But we'll make it work. battery is labeled the larger plane is usually labeled with positive which means the textured plane is negative not all batteries have a textured side but this one does and I suppose I could just reuse this little insulator well, that's pretty thick though I think we'll be fine. And I gotta be careful. I'm doing a test fit here, and the negative battery terminal shorts across one of these capacitors on the edge. Uh, okay, so we're going to we're gonna save that for another trip. scissors. Alright, let's get over here too. Just to play it safe. I straight had that upside down, that's why. Oops. I wanted to put the battery terminals towards the front of the shell just to give me a little bit more room to maneuver. Yeah, that'll totally work. God, this is one of the stupidest things I've ever filmed. in this first. I picked really horrible wire. I didn't do it on purpose. But that black wire just like disintegrates. It even smells heat. But I think we're good. And now 
I just put this horrifying contraption back together. And it's gonna just, it's gonna just work. Feed this in. Put a little bit too much slack on this red wire and it's getting caught up in the mechanism. I'm trying to close it. There we go. We'll just let it hang out the bottom, it'll be fine. Oh god, this poor cart. Nope, it's still caught in there. What the heck? Build quality on these carts is not the best, so this certainly doesn't help. The Omega Definitive Edition improved on that quite significantly. But it still fits, so that's nice. I still have my indicator LED. Uh, and of course the time reset, but I was kind of to be expected. Let's set this thing back up. It's already 2023, just the second, and it is currently 246 and some change. Ta-da! All right, so we have time now. I can boot up a different game, or I can let it sit and we can try it again in a few minutes. I will be right back. Uh... Ta-da! Alright, so I totally forgot what time I, I paused this video and I'd have to actually stop recording to check that, so we'll just assume it's been about 15 minutes or so. Um, but before we get back to this, brief intermission. This is not the first time I've done stupid battery-related shit like this. Uh, I have a reproduction Pokemon Leaf Green cartridge, and an original Pokemon Leaf Green cartridge. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull both of these apart and show you that Pokemon Leaf Green does not use a battery. This cart doesn't use SRAM for saving, therefore it doesn't need a battery. This cart does not use real-time clock, therefore it doesn't need a battery. Therefore, there is no battery. This is a perfectly legit, perfectly working Pokemon Leaf Green. Um, these things go for way more than they should these days, uh, but it is what it is. Anyway, a few years back, I decided to be a smartass and did this to a reproduction cartridge. Now, I chose Leaf Green on purpose. Um, I mean, I guess it could have been Fire Red, uh, but I chose Pokemon a specific cart that does not use a battery because I cut a hole in the casing and then installed the biggest battery that I could fit in the Jesus thing. And I mean, it works as well as any repro can work. And then I just laid the sticker down over the battery. It's totally fine, but it's a repro guys. Relax. It's okay. We, we don't, we, we do a little tomfoolery and, and no one, no one gets upset. Who cares if I ruined 
a $5 cartridge that was never even legit in the first place. That someone tried scamming me just to get. Alright. Let's whip out cool, cool GB. I don't even think there's a game on this thing. Like, I went through all that effort. Fits totally fine. And I'm pretty sure I just have a video file flash to it. Because that's even funnier than a game. Oh, no, it has a game on it. Okay. I flashed Pokemon Emerald to it. Because, of course. Why wouldn't you flash Pokemon Emerald to Leaf Green? But, notice, it holds a save. <laughs> because it has a working battery. Uh, this thing, on the other hand, doesn't need a battery. Also has a working save. Works totally fine. I've got to pull that slate apart and do something with that touch sensor. I don't know what's going on, but it's driving me crazy. So we'll use a different GBA for the rest of the video. Um, see, regular leaf green works fine. I left off here. I just haven't been playing it that much. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to drop this in here. But before booting it up, let me, gra Oop, let me grab the phone here. And you can see it is now three. Come on. Try not to wake it because this is the work phone and I don't want it to show anything uh, sketchy. But you can see it's 3 o'clock. And if we power this up... It's almost 3 o'clock. It's off by a few seconds. But that's just because I kind of eyeballed it. I could set it forward, but as you can see, it's keeping time. So it accomplished what I set out to do. And now I can continue checking out. Ooh, I forgot to delete the old version. But now I can continue playing my ROM hacks and I don't have to worry about the time desyncing. Ta-da. Anyway, that's all I've got. Thanks for watching. Um, I'm I'm pretty confident that this thing is going to keep time. Um, I'm not so confident in the shelf life of this battery, but realistically, I expect to get at least five years out of it, which is a lot more than I got out of wherever it is. This little guy. Uh, this thing. I don't know how old it is, but I can't imagine I've had this cart more than three years. Uh, you know what, let, let me actually look this up, hang on. All right, so of course it's gonna depend on what specific, whoop, what specific manufacturer, uh, the actual age of the battery itself, et cetera, et cetera. But this is a CR1220 battery. And on average, they're good for about 35 milliamp hours. Three, five, two digits, that's it. They're small batteries, it makes sense. Now, as you size up the battery, the capacity can increase almost exponentially just because you have that much more volume to dedicate to electrode and electrolyte and cathode and whatnot, whatever all goes into the battery. And a CR2025, which is what I used in this thing, um, Well, here's packaging for CR2032. They're the same, just a little bit thicker. Uh, CR2025 is good for about 170 milliamp hours. That is a lot more. Uh, so realistically, if this thing lasted two to three years and my battery is, what, three, four, five times the capacity, I expect the shelf life of the battery to give out before the actual capacity does. Um, but I guess we'll see what happens, won't we? Um, it's also worth considering that this specific battery has been sitting in a tray in my parts bin for probably a year or two at this point, so it's not brand new. Uh, but as far as the capacity was concerned, it did seem pretty good. Pretty, pretty like new, but uh, 
I'm pretty happy with the... So you save, and then you wait for the thing to blink, and then you're good. Um, yeah, I don't know. I expect the battery chemistry to die before the real-time clock actually drains this thing. I don't have any equipment sensitive enough to measure the drain on this thing, uh, but like I said, if this thing was 35 milliamp hours and it lasted three years, we can extrapolate from there. But anyway, that's all I've got. Uh, I will throw some links in the description to some of this stuff. Uh, I'm not going to link to the batteries that I used. I'm going to link to much higher quality versions of the batteries that I used. Uh, but I use this battery because I have it. And um, otherwise it would be going to waste. So here we go. Thanks for watching. I hope this works. If you decide to try this out, please don't let me know. I don't want to know because this is horrifying. Um, just buy the proper battery, it'll be fine. I will also throw a link in the description to some CR1220s with tabs on them. They're not the exact same style tabs, they're a little bit different, so you'll have to you have to pay attention to the orientation and like bend the tabs around. Uh, but it should still work. Save the, um, the little insulator that comes with your battery and stick that on the new one. I'm just going to throw that in the parts bin and forget about it for now. Uh, oh, there it is. Yeah. I've had these things very long. Ooh, it'll go through ten batteries in a heartbeat. It'll it'll be so quick. No. Though I did go through a lot. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Happy New Year.